Well, as we enter the fourth consecutive weeks of nonstop protests demanding an end to racist police brutality and confronting the totality of the white supremacy underlying the system here in the United States, we also saw this past weekend celebrations and protests in honor of pride. Of course, this weekend marked the 51st anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, which is considered the, the uh, really the impetus of the modern day LGBTQ liberation struggle. So we'll watch some sights and sounds of the protests and celebrations that happened this past weekend. Marching from Hennepin and 4th to Loring Park on Sunday, not thinking twice about a canceled parade. Black Lives Matter and pride, because what affects one affects the other. Black Lives they Matter, yeah. powerful images there of course the the pride rainbow flag uh, mixed with signs demanding you know black lives matter and justice for George and all other victims of police killings I think it, it makes total sense um, that the marches in celebration um, and for the resistance of the LGBTQ community were so easily merged um, with these ongoing protests demanding an end to racist policing because of course these issues are so interconnected and we know with this legacy of Stonewall it was a riot that was started because the police were brutalizing black and brown um, LGBTQ people, black trans women in particular, um, at the Stonewall Inn, of course, um, in New York City. So again, just really, really beautiful to see people continue on the struggle of uh, this, this legacy of militancy and in the street struggle for LGBTQ liberation. No, absolutely. I think worth noting for people, I mean, the Stonewall Inn has become so well known around the world. They had to get a $500,000 loan, it was announced this morning, not to close. They have $40,000 a month rent plus everything else that comes with it. And of course, in the context of the pandemic, obviously, you can't have the level of business you would have, especially right now around the, the time of pride. And I mean, it just to me is an unbelievable statement. We talk about the interconnectedness of issues that what is literally one of the most iconic buildings on the planet. I mean, this is an icon for LGBTQ people and people who are for justice and equality around the world, around the world, that that could still be, you know, subject to the gentrifying capitalist market and potentially closed down. And, and you know, hopefully that will never happen. And of course, you know, the, the people who are, are behind the Stonewall Inn and many millions of people around the world, I'm sure will rally to do whatever they can to protect it. But just the fact that you can even, even have a situation like this, where a building like that is not permanently protected and permanently preserved it is a slap in the face of the LGBTQ community in this country and around the world, I have to say. I mean, it really is, is quite disgusting. And as much as we're, we're all talking about Stonewall, I think it's important to know that these sorts of, uh, that, that, this, that this is happening and that is such an important an entity like this could be at risk. I think that's exactly right, Eugene. That's completely infuriating. I mean, given all the lip service that um, our liberal politicians here in New York City give um, to pride, give to LGBTQ um, resistance and, and everything our community has been demanding for decades. Um, it, it's really um, exactly, as you said, a slap in the face. And speaking of literal slaps in the face to protesters this weekend, the NYPD and uh, police across the country continuing on their own legacy of beating down LGBTQ people in the the streets. We'll turn to some footage of the brutality that we saw at Pride demonstrations um, over the weekend.
see there a whole range of things that first image was from Aurora Colorado the demonstrations from Elijah McLean uh, there's he was a violin player of course and so there was a violin concert brutally there the second one was the Detroit Police Department driving that car by the way Governor Kim Reynolds of Iowa her car hit a protester this weekend allegedly inadvertently um, and then the final one I believe was the NYPD and that was mm -hmm. uh, around some of the actions that were taking place there for pride in New York over the weekend that's right. I mean, so disgusting, not surprising. We are seeing the uh, the continuing of police repression um, in the face of a movement demanding an end to police brutality in a time right. where um, the entire world is watching the actions of American police. And this is them on their best behavior. But really, as I said, um, this is them continuing their job, continuing to carry out their role of repressing movements, people's movements for justice and repressing um, the most oppressed communities in this country, of course, at large, the black community. And as we're seeing, of course, um, the, this intersection in the, in the black LGBTQ community in uh, uh, LGBTQ immigrants, all of this um, in the poorest communities out here, this is what we're seeing time and time again. And it's really no surprise. But I, I think this is hopefully a little bit of a wake up call. I know activists for years on the ground have been calling out um, the over policing of pride parades, the fact that now there are police literally marching in parades, waving the flag, um, talking about we're out here for queer and trans lives, all of this, you know, this pink washing, also the um, the corporatization and, and uh, mainstreaming, mainstreaming of so many pride parades uh, around the country, most notably here in New York City, um, are the largest pride celebration around the world every single year, um, incredible police presence and, and brutality now as we see people merging um, their celebration of LGBTQ resistance with this fight for black lives, of course. And I think this is, um, like I said, a little bit of a, remi a reminder of what we need because with the commercial commercialization of pride, with um, how this has turned into some glitter and rainbow celebration in cities across the country, which is beautiful. I mean, we, we have a right to celebrate. We have a right to dance in the streets and, and to and to honor um, and be proud of our resistance and, our, and our, the legacy of struggle, the giants like Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera whose shoulders we stand on. But these very same people, um, the cops who march alongside us, are the ones who 51 years ago were literally the trigger for the Stonewall Uprising, right? Um, black trans women at the front line of that struggle, defending their people um, against the police, the NYPD, this long history of just rolling up into gay bars and beating on people. That is why Pride started. Um, so I, it's really um, going to show this year that Pride started with a riot. It did not start with a parade. And I think um, it's so important that we're continuing this uh, militant legacy of struggle, of uh, being in the streets, organizing for our communities, serving our communities, um, like the legacy of, again, all of these leaders that um, we hear being name dropped left and right um, by all of these um, Democratic and liberal politicians across the board, by um, the nonprofits that uh, they are in bed with. They love to name drop Marsha and Sylvia and all these other um, incredible leaders of LGBTQ resistance. but they are the same ones um, letting the cops come down and brutalize peaceful protesters. So uh, more of the same, but uh, what's really beautiful about it is we are seeing, again, the fourth week of this uprising. Um, people are not going home, and, and in response to all of this brutality from the police, we're actually seeing more and more people hit the streets. So it's really um, an incredible testament to people power. Yeah, absolutely. The struggle continues whether or not the corporate media is showing it. That's facts.